Hey everyone, it's Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'll show you how to create a cool sort of glitched, sliced vocal effect instrument using a quick sampler in Logic Pro 10. So I've got a excerpt of a vocal stem from a song here. I know you say you're not afraid to dive into something. You got nothing to lose, but I'm not that way. Taking my sweet time, don't wanna be the one to cry. Okay, so this is a pretty long sample here. What I'm gonna do is trim this up just to one area that's got some pitch variation in it. Um, if you use too long of a sample, it can get sort of convoluted and confusing really quickly. So I usually recommend you know chopping this down to something that's a little more manageable that has some variation in it. It also helps if you know the key of the vocal stem in advance. I know that this is C sharp minor, so that's gonna help me out later. Okay, so with my little vocal sample here, I'm just gonna drag this right into the track header here. This uh, was a new feature that was added in Logic 10.5. And then what you can do is you can automatically load this into Quick Sampler. So I'm gonna load this into Quick Sampler Optimized. And what this will do is it will load up that sample in Quick Sampler. Now you can see that it's automatically sliced up my vocal sample. If you don't see it like this, probably means you're on classic or one shot mode. Just make sure you're on slice mode and it'll automatically slice up that vocal sample. So each one of these little yellowish orange uh, markers is a different note on your MIDI controller. So it starts on C1 and chops it up as high as it needs to go. So you're not going to use all of these slices. Some of them are certainly uh, more useful than others. But one thing you can do to adjust these is you can actually scroll in with your mouse or your trackpad and you can remove markers if there's too many markers, like here on D1. So maybe I want this to all be one sample. I can just double click to remove a marker. Nothing. Nothing. And if you need to add a marker, you can just click again to add the marker and you can drag this around to adjust the length of that sample of that slice. So that little note there might be a cool little vocal hi-hat effect. Let's pull out a few of these as well. Maybe I want one right here. Pull that forward a bit. So what you have to do at this point is go through and find the vocal chops or the vocal slices that you like that uh, you find useful and sort of jot them down or just memorize them on your keyboard. Another thing I like to do is I like to put the instrument in monophonic mode. So right here where it says polyphony, I'll change this to mono so I don't have any overlapping slices. After you've determined what notes you like, it's helpful to create either a pattern region or a MIDI region, and you can create sort of like a template that holds just the notes that sort of work best for you. So out of all of those vocal slices, these were the notes that I liked best. And what you can do in the piano roll editor is you can click here to collapse the piano roll to just show those notes. So you can sort of use this as a template to come up with an idea with just the slices that you like. So off screen, I created a bit of a little sequence here with each of my vocal slices that I liked. So here's what this sounds like with just a real basic beat, uh, just a loop behind it. So another thing we can do is we can add other elements to this. Now, if you're using loops from Logic's loop library, it helps if you know what the key of the original vocal sample was. So for me, it was C-sharp minor. So I'm gonna change Logic's global key up here to C-sharp minor. And then I can start auditioning maybe some bass lines or some other samples or loops 
from Logic's loop library. So here's one called Alpha Matrix Base. Let's throw that in there and let's see if this sounds any good. So that's pretty nice sounding. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some effects to the, the vocal idea, and then we're gonna sort of sparse it out a bit. So the first thing I like to do is I like to add auto-tune to it. Now you can use Logic's built-in correction tool, uh, choose the key, you know, for me it would be natural minor and C sharp. I'm gonna roll the response time all the way down and uh, if you're using like a bass, like a lower voice, you can uh, choose low, like a baritone or uh, like a bass voice. But like female vocals are going to be in the normal range. And you can give this sort of even more of a glitchy effect by adding an auto tune effect to it. So if you don't have some other third party plugin for vocal tuning, you can do it that way. I'm gonna use uh, Auto-Tune Artist here and I'll just set the input type, C sharp minor, the retune speed uh, pulled all, cranked all the way down. And then I'll put this on the classic mode. It's uh, more glitchy that way. <laughs> Now, because this is a vocal effect, I don't necessarily want the full frequency range of the voice in there. I might want to uh, band pass it by cutting out the low end and the high end a bit. That's completely up to you. I like to use the Waves King's microphone effect. Uh, it gives it sort of like an old timey, like old school microphone effect. Now I also want to add a bit of delay to this. So I've got the stereo delay pulled up. I'm just going to filter out the delays a bit and pull down the wet dry balance. Let's see what that sounds like. And a little reverb uh, never hurts as well. So one last thing that I like to do is I like to duplicate that whole effect. And what I'll call this is a formant shifted version of it. And what I'm going to do is, in addition to all the effects that are on there, in between the auto-tune and all of my other effects, I'm going to add the pitch plugin called Vocal Transformer. And the Vocal Transformer is both a formant shift plugin as well as a pitch shift plugin. So you can try playing around with uh, different pitch effects in addition to formant effects. So maybe sometimes I want some of these little vocal slices to be up an octave or down an octave, but then maybe I wanna shift up their formant or pull down their formant, or maybe just adjust the formant alone. So what you can do is sort of find some spots that you want to be affected by this formant shift effect, and then just separate them out and pull them down to this track. Maybe I'll just keep the pitch the same, but then I'll pull the formant up and create sort of like a chipmunky type sound. And maybe I want to take this a step further. I'll duplicate the formant shifted track and I'll create one that is up an octave plus has a formant shift. Yeah, there you go. On my third vocal track, I pitch shifted up her voice by 12 semitones, 
and pulled up the formant as well. And then I panned, the formant shifted over to the left and the pitched and formant shifted over to the right to get some cool stereo effects. And you can even play with the other effects on these tracks to create some cool effects as well. <laughs> so yeah, go wild with this. There's a lot of really cool things you can do experimenting with this type of vocal chop or vocal slicing uh, sampling technique. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.